Hi everybody, Robert Earl at the Eco Ranch again, and we are once again up here on the roof at the Eco Ranch, but we're going to discuss my power room in all this wind, if you can hear me over it. Why are we up here on the roof? Well, I just thought I'd show you the power first before I showed you the room. Let me turn my viewfinder around. All right, and here he is. 59 solar panels, there we go, 59 solar panels, and six wind turbines. 59 solar panels produce 7.65 kilowatts of power, and the wind turbines are rated, rated at 70 miles an hour at over 6,000, or 6 kilowatts. So we have to have a way of efficiently getting that power to the batteries without damaging the batteries. So let me go to go down and show you how we do it. Okay, I'm back and we're inside the power room. And I'm going to turn it around now and let's talk a little bit. Right directly in front of us, once I get the viewfinder set, right directly in front of us is the very first charge controller I had. Now all my charge controllers and meters are from Coleman Air. As I said very clearly, by the way, as I said when talking about wind turbines, there I'm sure there are other uh, meters and charge controllers that are equally as good or better. I just happen to have had good luck with Coleman Air, and when I have good luck with something, I stay with it. I don't experiment. So this is my Coleman Air charge controller, the very first one. Now this down here, this junk, um, is the very first... Um, uh, forklift battery I had and I call it junk not because of the manufacturer but because that charge controller and a couple of peripherals I bought from somebody combined and didn't do their job properly overcharged this battery and blew a couple of cells out and it just isn't salvageable so it's sitting there until we move it and I may very well do a little video about me trying to move this 1400 pound monster when Debbie and I started this journey we were like a lot of you we didn't know exactly what we were doing and so we went to the internet and we went to YouTube and we studied and tried to learn. I had no idea how much power it was going to take to do what we wanted to do. I simply didn't know. Now I learned and now I know, but I didn't know back then so I thought this would work just fine. It dumped the power, you see those relays down there, it dumped the power through those relays into the two hot water heaters. This is one and the other one is behind the relay. You can just barely see it right there. But it's 100 gallons of water with 12 volt um, 600 watt um, heating elements in it that uh, take my excess power. And they did okay but the whole system with when I got up to you know over 20 panels wasn't reacting fast enough. This is where we ran into trouble. So I called Coleman Air and said what do I do? And what you see here is what you do. And this is what you do, and this is the only way. Now, I shouldn't say the only way. The only way that Coleman Air told me that I could deal with the power that I have. So, let's start at the top. And you'll notice the spaghetti here. I had this stuff neat, but I had to keep wiggling it and wiggling it around. We have two, two, um, two sets of uh, power options in 12 volt coming along uh, coming in here one is going through the system I'm showing the other one goes through this which a lot of us are more familiar with that's a car fuse box uh, the direct things I use like the power that goes to the meters um, uh, in the buildings the uh, lighting that we have um, uh, a fan that I that I operate anything that's 12 volt directly goes from battery through these fuses and then out to it but this is all for the power that gets inverted and converted into my AC power. So, 59 panels, each one of these um, fuse boxes, which I'm using as combiners, and combiners combine the power. That's all they do. They'll take one, two, three, four, five, six. I had a 40, um, a 40 space um, one for a short time. They'll combine all that power into one set of wires. So I've got the wire coming in. In this case, each one of these 10 fuse boxes takes six, um, takes six solar panels, with the exception of that one. That's where you get the 59 from. Um, that one uh, is for, uh, for some future expansion, and I am going to add a couple more panels uh, later. Now, 
you combine that power and then you have one set of wires coming out of out of each fuse box so you have one set of wires that comes out that one set of wires drops down to a charge controller and this is a um, a little different charge controller than the one I had over there this one is designed to handle 60 amps and it uh, when it blinks twice like it's blinking it shows we're on the bulk charge in other words all the power is going right into my batteries outside if it blinks once it's in float that means that the batteries are full it's these are cutting off and not letting the power get to the batteries and we're running strictly off of the sun the reason we're not on a float right now is Debbie's running the air conditioner over there and I don't blame her now just for literally just for the hell of it we added the amp meters and I think uh, Craig at Coleman Air is going to get a look at this um, and so I'm going to show number three right here this one here I sent out to have repaired by them and it doesn't appear to be working right um, actually it's a little warm right now so it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do but at any rate I'll deal with uh, I'll talk to Coleman Air about that but anyway comes down to these down here is what's called a shunt, and that's that's what you use to read the power going through the, um, uh, the, the, the the amperage rather that you have coming out of each one. So each one of the ten boxes has ten charge controllers, ten amp meters. Then the amp meters drop it drops down through the shunt, which doesn't you know it, it it's it doesn't mechanically do anything. Then we drop directly down to my main bus bar. This is my positive bus bar. This is hot. And if you, it's too hot to hold, but not burning hot. And the negative one down here is the same way. Um, and, and let me tell you right now, folks, if you don't know anything about electricity, if you have heat, you're losing power because heat's generated by something. It just doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes from power. So I'm losing electricity to the heat. This I was prepared for. Any place else, I'm not. If, these, if this wire was hot here, for example, I'm not prepared for that. I'd have to change the wire. But I knew I'd have some loss here. But at any rate, it comes down, positive and negative, to the main bus bar. Then over here, these gigantic big thick wires are the, the forklift batteries outside coming into the bus bar and then coming out of the bus bar up to the power inverters. Now these are uh, these are Ames power inverters, and what a power inverter does again, if you're a beginner, it takes the DC power, that's the power that's in a flashlight and in your car, and it converts it to AC power, that's the power that's in your home. Your home has 220 uh, volt service, so in order to get 220 volt service uh, in this type of a system, you either have to have a special inverter that's a lot, it's a lot more expensive, but maybe not a lot more than buying two, or you need two. In this case, I have two. The bigger one is an 8,000 watt, the littler one is a 5,000 watt. That gives me 13,000 watts of available power that transfers right through here into my AC power box. This is the exact same kind of fuse box that you would have in your house. I have 220 amp service here. This is the only 220 amp fuse we have at the moment. It goes to my welder. And yes, I can power a welder with this system. I can also run a electric stove and an um, electric clothes dryer. We have no need for a clothes dryer. Now, I hope that's fairly simple. You come over here. I've already discussed the wind turbines in, another, uh, in other videos. But the wind turbines, this is a combiner box, which means it's a fuse box. It takes the six wind turbines. This has the potential of having a lot more power come in. We're not going to get more than 60 uh, amps through these charge controllers here because we know, for example, that each one of those um, panels up there is, uh, is either 125 or 140 watts. That means, uh, you know, 8.8 .8 or 11 um, uh, amps, period, that can come through each one. Multiply that times 6. We're not exceeding 60. Here, I can get a gust of wind. I've had some huge gusts, and so this has to be big enough to handle it. In this case, this is 440 amps. Uh, does the same thing, except in this case, it can't turn off the solar panels when they're not needed. It has to shunt the power. So the power comes through now, comes through and goes over to those two relays I showed you earlier that send the power into here. It sends 2,400 watts of power into my hot water tanks and in the right wind that might not be enough 
So there we are with the power room and the power system that we're operating here. This is working flawlessly uh, with the exception of the one, um, um, one, one amp meter that may, may still need some service. But this is working perfectly. It's cutting the power off where we want it. You'll notice we're solid um, here at 13.8. This one here is only giving us one blink. Oh, there it went to two was giving us only one blink though there there's the one blink right there that means that these panels all six of them are shut off and the power that's coming into um, uh, shut off from going into the battery that's that's what's it's not going into the battery sorry I get tongue-tied okay that's it I'm going to show you my forklift batteries now you saw that my power inverters were from Ames Corporation again I've had wonderful luck with Ames however the inverter store, which is Ames, the inverter store, has the worst customer service attitude I've ever met in my life. But the quality of the inverters makes up for it. So guys, step up your game. Don't, don't act like you're doing us a favor. I'm the guy with the money. My money's in, your money's in my pocket, not the other way around. You need to get your money out of my pocket. But anyway, uh, the product is excellent, so put up with a lousy customer service. On the other hand, these batteries come from Extra Power. They're in Montreal, Quebec, and you couldn't ask for better customer service. These are 24 volt batteries that they actually custom made for me down to 12 volts. Their capacity, each one I think um, is 3,150 amp hours each battery. There's two of them here, and this is kind of cool. When I ordered them, I ordered them with plugs on here. Right now I've got these two plugged together. There's two more sitting up in Alpine that have to be delivered here. Those two are going to go here and here. Then this one will plug into this one. This one will plug into this one. And these two will also plug in together. So the whole system will be all tied up together. All 12,400 amp hours. Uh, and to have a system of this size, which I'm... I really haven't seen anybody with a system as big as what we have. I'm sure they're out there, and please, if they, if you, if you're out there, let me know. But um, with a system of this size, you need everything I just showed you to keep it to keep it um, operational and to keep from having a problem. Because the power that's in just one of those batteries, mishandled, will kill you. It will stop your heart. And you can imagine if I mishandled those two bus bars with two, or now or very soon four of these batteries, how quick it'll kill you, how quick it'll start a fire, how quick it'll melt those bus bars, you wouldn't believe. It'll melt those bus bars faster than, a, uh, than solder melts under a torch. So you have to know what you're doing, you have to handle them correctly. You do get hydrogen release from the batteries, that's why I decided to move them outside, even though I do have a great exhaust system here that, I, that we designed. So there's the power room, there's the batteries, got long-winded yet again. Please, no thumbs down, please, please. <laughs> and folks, thanks again. I hope I'm helping some of you. Um, some of this stuff's boring. I try to be funny when I can, but I, it's kind of hard to, um, it's kind of hard to be funny and serious at the same time sometimes. So um, I hope you enjoyed the power room batter, uh, discussion. On a 95 degree day in West Texas, it's Robert Earl at the Eco Ranch. Bye for now.